Hello everybody, myself Jyoti and uh, this is 11th lecture on atomic and molecular physics and today we are going to talk about electron probability density. So uh, we know that uh, the total energy of the electron in hydrogen atom which we calculated quantum mechanically that comes out to be the same which was given by Bohr. But uh, what Bohr said was that electrons they revolve around the nucleus in fixed orbits. Now how we can prove that with the help of quantum theory. So it is very difficult quantum mechanically to visualize the electron moving in a circular orbit. So that is what we have to check uh, how we can compare quantum mechanics with what Bohr's postulate says. Now suppose psi it is a wave function, psi it is a function of r, theta and pi uh, and it is a function describing the electron. So we can talk about location of electron in terms of a wave function psi and the probability density is given by psi square is equals to mod of r square mod of theta square and mod of phi square. So this mod of psi square gives the probability of locating the electron. Now when we so we are having three components phi theta and r. So if we, if we want to find out the probability psi square, we should know mod of r square, we should know mod of theta square and mod of phi square. So now let us take the first one mod of phi square that is called as the azimuthal probability density and mod of phi square is constant. It is independent of phi. So wave function phi as we have seen in the earlier lecture, it is given by a e raised to i ml phi and uh, mod of phi square is equals to a square it is independent of phi it means that uh, electrons probability density is symmetrical about z axis regardless of its quantum state when we are getting phi see phi it is the angle okay and if we try to find out the probability mod of phi square it comes same spherically it's symmetric in the sense uh, suppose i have a nucleus i have position of electron over here and if I am taking it on the circumference spherically symmetric at all points on the circumference the probability is going to come same that way. Now here a can be found by normalizing phi so I will integrate phi square d phi from 0 to 2 pi and so 0 to 2 pi it will be we know that absolute value of phi square is equals to a square so a square d phi a square being common I will take it outside so integration uh, 0 to integration d phi from 0 to 2 pi and when I substitute limits obviously I will get a square 2 pi and this is equals to 1 as I am normalizing so I am getting 2 pi a square is equals to 1 a square is equals to 1 upon 2 pi or I will get a is equals to 1 upon root 2 pi. So normalized phi equation is phi is equals to 1 upon root 2 pi. I substituted value of a and into e raised to i ml phi. Now we have to find out theta square absolute value of theta square that is called as the zenith probability density and this probability varies with the zenith angle for all states with non-zero L. So if L is equals to 0, then uh, this probability is constant. So this probability is constant for all S states and it exists for all non-zero values of L. That means for S state, the zenith probability is constant. And for P, D, if all other states, there is a certain value of zenith probability density. Means it will vary. Now here, as we are taking the... Uh, example of hydrogen atom we know that for hydrogen atom there is a s state so naturally the zenith probability density will also be constant in case of hydrogen atom so for s states we know that theta square is constant we know that phi square is constant and absolute value of psi square it depends upon r theta phi as theta is constant phi is constant that means that wave function psi psi square probability it depends upon only r so um, the electron probability density psi square has the same value at a given r in all directions and probability densities for s states are symmetrically uh, spherically symmetric while others are not and so uh, we have to find out our main aim is to find out radial probability density r square 
so what is the radial probability density it is the probability of finding an electron at a given distance r from the nucleus and it is given in by this formula pr dr is equals to r square absolute value of r square dr now here if we use this equation and if we plot pr as a function of r for various energy levels we get following results now look at this results so suppose uh, I am taking this n equals to 1 and l equals to 0. That means 1 is state. When we have taken the earlier lecture that time we have seen that when l is 0, we have s state and when n is 1. So when we say 1 is the initial number 1, it represents n value and s it represents l value. So l is 0 for s state, l is 1 for p state, l is 2 for d state and so on. So the curve obtained by plotting PR as a function of R has a single maximum. Look at this curve. So when we plotted PR as a function of R, we are getting single maximum at A0. Okay. So here this is the case for N is equals to 1, L is equals to 0. So it is not at 4, 4A0, four it is at A0. Huh? This is a correction over here. So this maximum occurs at R is equals to A0 where A is Bohr's radius that is the radius of the Bohr's of orbit of the electron in the ground state. Now let us take the second case that is N is equals to 2 and when we have N is equals to 2 we know that L can take N minus 1 values that means L can be either 0 or 1. So when we take this case that is 2A state 2 represents N and S represents L is 0. So in this case, the graph of when we will plot graph of PR versus R, it shows two maxima. So the first hump is quite low. You can see this hump is quite low. And there is a second hump over here and uh, which is pretty high comparatively and broad even. And if you take the case of N is equals to 2 and L is equals to 1, that is 2P state because L is equals to 1 that represents P state and 2P. 2 represents the n is equals to 2. So for 2p state if you will check in this case you get a single broad hump here and this will be having maxima at 4a0. So for n is equals to 1 l equals to 0 we got maxima at a0 and for n is equals to 2 l equals to 0 uh, l is equals to 1 we got maxima which is at 4a0. Now let us consider the third case when n is equals to 3 uh, we know that L can take N minus 1 value. That means L can be 0, L can be 1, L can be 2. So in this case, we will have 3S, 3P and 3D state. So uh, in case of 3S state, we get two tiny hums followed by a broad high hum. That means we get three uh, hums. In case of N equals to 3, L equals to 1, we get a single hall hump uh, followed by a broad higher hump. And for N is equals to 3, L is equals to 2, we get a single broad hump. Uh, which is having maxima at r equals to 9a0. Look at this diagram. So for 3a state, we got 3... So for 3a state, we got uh, this 3 maxima. Then for uh, 3p, we got two broad humps. And then for 3d, we are getting a single broad hump, which is having maximum at 9a0. Okay, that means for n equals to 1, l equals to 0, we got maximum at a0. For n is equals to 2, l is equals to 1, we got second maximum which was at 4a0. And for n is equals to 3, l is equals to 2, we are getting maximum at 9a0. So, uh, if we plot this 3, see, we will get this. a0, maximum at a0, 4a0 and 9a0. This is how it goes. So in Bohr's theory also we prove that electron orbiting around the nucleus in a circular orbit can revolve only in those orbits which have red eye given by Rn equals to n square a0. This is the condition which was given by Bohr. And this is what exactly we are observing in three situations. See, here for n is equals to 1, it is R. Uh, n square a0 for n is equals to 2 it is n square a0 means 4 a0 and for n is equals to 3 3 square a0 that means 9 a0 exactly that is what we are getting so what is common between the three situations is that in each case l is equals to n minus 1 that l has hi its highest permissible value for a given n and for each n l is equals to n minus 1 
and that gives the probability of finding the electron so whatever bohr's model has predicted that electron will be revolving around those nucleus same kind of results we are getting here that uh, because in quantum mechanics we talk in terms of probability so exactly at those points we are getting the uh, maximum probability of locating the electron so that is how we know that whatever bohr's postulates have given the results they are exactly matching when we are uh, talking the same thing in terms of quantum mechanics thank you thank you so much